and we'll chat a little bit about it. Good morning, Carlos. What's happening? What's happening? You know, same old, same old. Plug it away. It's a huh? dream. You, you were on your world tour last uh, last couple of weeks, huh? How did things go? It's good, good. Uh, was uh, took some time. What was that? A week ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it took some time. It was enjoyable. I mean, it was a lot of work, but uh, it wasn't so much a vacation. It was just, uh, you know, dance, dance, dance competition, 12 hours of this continuous dance, you know, yeah. but it was fun. It was exciting because, you know, we had a, a hiccup. Um, you know, we had our uh, little girl, she was sick and she pushed through. She was an animal. And she pushed, she pushed through and she was sick and she had to be there. She had to be a part of the team. And, you know, they said, you know, she can cancel her solos and stuff, but the team one she has to be on. And man, it, it was not, she was weak, you know, it was just, and she pushed through and she didn't skip a beat. I was super impressed and super proud. Awesome. That's awesome. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. The resilience. That's good, man. <laughs> I know and I'm tough. like, I just, it was emotional. It's like, cause we see her do it all the time, you know? Yeah. And, you know, so it's not like it was a new thing, but for, for her mom and I were worried about, uh, you know, how she was going to do because we knew how sick she was, you know? And man, she didn't skip a beat. <laughs> yeah, very, great. very, very emotional for us because it was just so proud. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so, awesome. <laughs> and they won one of their dances. You know, that's it's just it was so exciting. You know, mm -hmm. got first mm -hmm. place. It was just it's just impre and impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes it all makes it all worth it. You know. Oh that's my it. gosh. You know? Yeah. That's the best thing. I mean, I think, you know, you know, I'm the same way with, you know, with, with my son, it's like, it's so much fun being at the, uh, the events and the, in the uh, heated things and, uh, you know, cheering them on. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. That's what we do it for, you know, yeah. that's what we do it for, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Cool. You know, well, that is you know traveling three hours, you know, traveling three hours down to Branson, it's just, you know, it was like, man, did we come down here for no reason? Are you going to do this or what? You know? And then, <laughs> And she pulled it through. She yeah. pulled it through. I was proud. Yeah, that's exactly. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I beat you by a week. We were in Branson the week before. Yeah. The tournament. <laughs> you know, um, so, uh, well, cool, man. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. Well, you know, she certainly has um, has some some big goals, and she uh, put some action behind it, had some great disciplines behind it. And, um, you know, that's that's great. That's exactly what we were Wanted to talk a little bit about today. I thought we would uh, listen to a little Zig Ziglar kind of talk about some of his uh, his message about goals. Right, goals are so important. You know, in order for us to be able to follow up, have success in what we do, we've got to have some goals. And we've got to execute against those goals. And um, you know, I was just listening to you know Zig Ziglar video, which I know you're a big fan of, and I was like, man, this would be a good one to kind of play, listen a little bit, and kind of chat about it. This is, I'm telling you, this is where. <laughs> You know, when I was 18 years old, I didn't know anything. This Zig Ziglar is the first person, the very first person that I listen to and I watch. And I'm telling you every day, no matter what you do in life, no matter where you're at, you always got to, to listen to someone, something, yeah. Yeah. some yeah. kind of motivation, somebody above you, somebody that has done it, somebody that has experienced it. No matter where you're at, no matter how how you feel you are you know, or how you feel that you've done or accomplished or where you think you're at right now, it's always good to listen to somebody else. Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. this guy taught me at 18 years old to do these goals. This is where I learned the word goals. You know, I mean, I had a goal from my parents, but when it came to business, you know, I had a goal to try to make it to the Olympics. You know, I had a goal when I was young and I had goals and I worked for them. But when it came to business, when it came to, uh, you know, doing, you know, motivating me as an adult, because there's nobody to motivate you. Right. Nobody's going to do it for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You got to do it yourself. Yeah. And as an adult, 
um, this is the guy that taught me these goals. Well, you know, one, one of the things that I, I learned a lot of stuff from Ziegler, from Brian Tracy as well. And one of the things that, uh, that I loved about what their message was, was like, get this stuff into you, listen to it on a regular basis, a consistent basis, you know, and then it starts driving, I think subconsciously it starts driving our actions. And, um, you know, I think, I think that's the big thing. And Brian Tracy was always talking about, you know, that first hour, that hour of power, that first hour a day, you know, listen to something that's going to enrich you, right. Whether it be educationally, spiritually, whatever, get something into you that first hour of the day um, in order to, uh, to get you going. And, um, you know, so I thought we'd start, started off with a little Zig Zig Ziglar, one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest and uh, obviously one of the most influential out there. And I thought we'd start with a little bit of his message on goal setting uh, to, to, to kick off our hour of power, start our hour of power, uh, you know, on follow up Friday. So, uh, so let's give it a listen. Let's go, let's, let's pop it on there and, Check out Mr. Ziegler and see what he's talking about and chat a little bit about what he is talking about, which is goals. The lack of your time is not a problem, is what Zig Ziegler says. Lack of your time is not a problem. Here we go. Teams are absolutely critical uh, if we're really going to be successful in life. The only uh, difference is you dream with your eyes wide open and not uh, while you're sound asleep only. The difference between a dream and a goal is simply a goal is a dream with a deadline. Carlos, can you hear that? Yep. What I didn't do is I didn't check to see if I enabled the audio. Um, so so let me test this real quickly because I want to make sure that the audio is coming through. Um, let me test this real quickly and make sure it's coming through uh, on my phone. So I'm going to stop it for a second and then um, go on to my live and I will apply. Um, let me test this real quick to make sure it's coming through. Uh, and, so, so we need to have that vision and that dream. And then we need to start going through the process, the formula of working towards reaching it. Now, let me tell you what I do with my audiences on every seminar. I start by asking how many of you are honest and every hand goes up. Second question, how many of you, the day before you go on vacation, generally get more done then you normally get done in any two, three, four, or five days. Well, everybody holds up that, but of course I do, all right? And let me tell you why you do that. First of all, you focus on exactly what you've got to do. Second, you make a list of what needs to be done. Third, you prioritize those things as to what is important. Fourth, you get after them with a considerable amount of enthusiasm. Fifth, you accept the responsibility that if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. Six, you make the commitment to do it. And seventh, you become a team player. Now, if it works that well, before you go on vacation, why not do it every day? Now, let me emphasize a point. By doing it every day, one of two things will happen. You'll either move up the ladder very quickly, or else you will finish what you need to do much more quickly. Then you can use the extra time for recreation, personal growth, family time, spiritual growth, or all of the other things. Lack of time is not the problem. Lack of direction is the problem. Talk to me a little bit about goals, setting goals. How do we go about doing that? We begin uh, by writing down everything we want to be, do, or have. Let it sit for 48 hours. Then after each thing we've written down, write one word, that's why. And if we can't articulate in one sentence why we want to be, do, or have, then we eliminate that one at that time as a goal because it's just an idle thought. It's nothing sincere or serious. How can we tell uh, what we're serious about? How can, how can we really design something for our lives that's perhaps wishful thinking as opposed to reality? Well, actually, there are seven steps. You uh, look at what it is that remains on your list, and then you write down, number one, why do? You write the goal down as number one. Number two, why do I want to reach this goal? In other words, what will my benefits be if I reach this goal? Number three, you identify the obstacles that you'll have to overcome to get there. Number four, you spell out the people, the groups, the organizations you need to work with to get there. Number five, you identify what you need to know to get there. 
Number six, you devise a specific game plan to get there. And number seven, then you put the date on it. By the time you've done that, that will eliminate another 90% of all the things you've written down. And that saves you enormous amounts of time. So many people for so long have been told so many times what they cannot do. They really don't know what they can do. They have no idea what they want because they don't know what's available for them. And that's the key for them. They can see where you or anybody else could get it, but not me. The image they have of themselves, the picture they have of themselves is not that of a winner. And until we can persuade them to change the picture and show them how to change that picture, they're not going to set those goals because they say in their own mind, I can't get them in here. What's the use? That's the problem there. How can a person create a healthy self-image and perhaps they don't have a great opinion of themselves? Well, one thing they can start, my friend Joe Batten gave me this one. Uh, you list the victories you have had in your life. I mean, from the day that you can first remember, you'll be astonished to realize that a uh, typical 25-year-old uh, person can identify at least 200 things which they have done that have been successful, they've been victories. And then when things are not going well, they look at those and that gives them encouragement. Number two, identify the positive qualities which they have. In other words, anybody can honestly say, I can be just as honest as the next guy. I can work just as hard. I can be just as enthusiastic. I can develop just as much motivation. I can become just as good a student. And anybody with these qualities has got to be that right. The way you dress even can have an impact on it. The message I try to deliver to people is play to win. Don't play to avoid loss because the things you fear the things that's going to happen to you. Set that target on something positive. Work for it. Expect it. Robin Knight at Indiana University says the will to win is nothing without the will to prepare to win. See, everybody wants to win, but are you willing to prepare to win? One of the major points I often make is what you do off the job determines how far you go on the job. Every athlete, every actor, every singer, every entertainer knows that. Most doctors and attorneys and professionals know that. Specific example, in the typical American plan, the hourly wage earner watches 30 hours of TV a week. The person in charge of the line watches 25 hours of television a week. The foreman watches 20 hours a week. The plant superintendent watches 15 hours. The vice president watches between 12 and 15. The president watches between 8 and 12, and the chairman of the board watches between 4 and 8 hours of TV. And 50% of that time, he or she is watching training videos. Now, my question is, what would happen to that line worker who watches 30 hours a week if he were to take away 10 of those hours a week, study and plan and prepare? I guarantee you wouldn't stay on the line very long. Wow. Wow. What a great message. What a great message from Mr. Ziegler. It's awesome. <laughs> Let me see if I can uh, take this off here. Hold on. It's off. It's gone. So, okay. so there's so many things in there that it's like, you, you know, it, it, I'm that, I don't know if I told you before we left, I thought we talked about it, but I know I told some people here, it's like there because they didn't see me before. There's a ton of people that just didn't see me. They're like, where you been? Where are you going? And it's like I have it. And they could tell that I had so much work going on. Well, my biggest thing is, is when I go on vacation, I have to get all I have to get two weeks. You know, the, the what I'm working on, plus a full next week worth of work done in the week before. Yeah, because when I'm gone. It's like, I got to be ahead. You know, I'm still not at the point where I could go and take a vacation and just leave. Right. And I need to get to that point. I know I need to get to that point. I know that's what I'm working for. But I still have to work for, I still got to get the work done and get it, you know, because if I'm gone, when I'm gone, I'm still, 
I'm a missing piece of my business. Yeah. You know, and and we both are. My wife and I both are. I mean, she was that we were there working late. We were working late. She was working late. You know, she was there. We were supposed to leave. And and she's she's working still, you know, because things needed to get done, you know. And it's like we need to get to that point where we're doing that for one all the time. But we do we do a ton of work before we leave just because we got to be ready for that week that we're gone. Yeah. Um, so but people do that. And they don't realize you got to do that all the time, all the time. You know? And, you know, those people that set goals and I see that. It, so those goals, I love those goals. If people aren't setting those goals, they need to. And the biggest part is, is setting the time frame. Yeah. Time frame. If you're not setting your time frame, then you're gonna, you're just playing along. Yeah. If you set that time frame, you know what the biggest part is people do is they set that time frame and they don't hit it a lot of the times. Yeah, they don't hit it. Yep. And they either they don't keep it or they don't hit it. They don't hit it, they don't keep it, they get frustrated. They get upset. They get mad. They get this is worthless. Why do I do this? They don't. They stop making goals, you know, or they just didn't work hard enough to it. You know what I mean? So the biggest part is is setting that time frame. And 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 if you don't get it, if you're working towards it and you're shy, you're short, you're, you know, you're almost there. Don't get frustrated. You just got to keep. You know, if it goes a week later, then it's done. You know, you got to hit your goal no matter what. You got to hit that goal. Yeah. Well, and and I, and I put in the comments, you know, as he was saying it, I was typing a lot of the comments, um, you know, a lot of the notes in the comments. But like this is the one that he talked about, you know, hey, right before vacation, how you hit all your how do you hit all your stuff? How do you get it all done? Well, I focus on needs, what needs to be done. Make a list, prioritize action and enthusiasm, commit and be responsible, make a commitment. You're going to do it. Become a team player. And, and so I took that. And then, you know, he also talked about, you know, goal setting. Right. And you, again, this is all what you just said. Goal setting. Start by writing everything down, everything we want. Wait for 48 hours. Go back through it and write down. Why do I want that goal? You know, and I love that he said, if we can't answer why, then we need to eliminate that goal. You know, and that is like 98 percent of the list <laughs> is eliminated because we can't answer why we want the goal. That why is so important to achieving and, and accomplishing our goals, because we might think we want something, but if we really don't understand why we want it, then we're not going to have the energy, the enthusiasm and the commitment. Right. Goes right back to what you just what would I just had up there? Energy, enthusiasm and commitment to accomplish and do that goal and follow through on that goal. Right. Right. And the biggest part is, is you got to have the confidence too. you know, the confidence. you got to have that enthusiasm and confidence because. You know, my biggest thing since when I was young was nobody's going to tell me I can't do it. You know, when I started a business at 18 years old, I thought it was crazy. You know, I thought it was like, wow, I'm a business owner. I, I can't believe that I started a business this age, you know, and, and I never thought that I would be, you know, I never thought I would start out my life, you know, as an adult, as a business owner. And, right. and it was a the life changing because I had determination. I had, uh, you know, I had discipline, you know, for what I was doing, but running business is not easy, you know, um, you know, being self-employed, you know, you, you being self-employed doesn't mean that you have a business, you know, you got to build a business. And I was self-employed when I was young. Yeah. You know, uh, I was building, I felt like I was building a business, but I was really just working my business, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And setting the goals was a big thing for me. Uh, And I was achieving them, you know? And then just like when I I got in a bad car accident, and that's part of the reason why I, I stopped my first business, because I was working my business and it wasn't set up to work itself. You know, I was working it. So if I didn't work it, then I wasn't making it, you know. So 
I got in a bad car accident, had to get out of it. Well, when I got in the car business, when I got in the car business, it was it was goal setting all day long. I was just every single morning, 6 a.m., I was setting goals, mm-hmm. you know, and and I achieved them. You know, I have to do three cars today. I have to do three cars. I have to find 10 people. I have to, you know, I have to call my whole entire list. And, and, and the enthusiasm that I had was huge. Yeah. You know, I could have that. I could turn my enthusiasm on and off now. You know, I could be super pumped and super excited and then go, 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 go. Or I could just, you know, just run my business. Yeah. You know, but it, it's it's a uh, it. You got to have that. You got to have that enthusiasm. You got to have that excitement. You yeah. know, people yeah. always tell me, man, you're so excited. You're so, you know, loud or you're so, you know, hey, you got to have it. You know, yeah. you got to have that enthusiasm. You got to set those goals. Yeah. Um, and you got to work for them. You know, I mean, somebody goes and tells me, you know, I, I remember these, you know, confidence and enthusiasm. It's like people tell me it's like you're not you know, the, there's somebody that comes on a lot and they're like the car lot. And they said, oh, I go, go help those people, you know, and and they say, uh, oh, they're not going to buy a car. I was like, oh, yeah, they're not. You know, I said, well, watch. So then I went out there and it was a guy on a bike, a bicycle, you know, he rode up on the car lot and I said, go help that guy. You know, it, no matter if he's riding a bike or comes in on a car, it's everybody could be a buyer, you know. Right. And so I went out there and helped him and then told him I'll sold that guy a car, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And and I was the manager at the time. And it's like these people were like, now nah, he, he ain't going to buy a car. I'm like, OK, here you go. Watch. Mm-hmm. So I went out there and sold him a car, you know, but it, it, you got to have that confidence. you got to have those goals. you got to have that drive. you got to have that plan, you know, to get those. And then those seven reasons, those seven reasons are, you know, I mean, you got to you got to have those reasons, too. Yeah, I love the, 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 the last one, put a date on it, you know, um, mm-hmm. I love the identify obstacles. Number three, identify obstacles, you know, spell out the, the groups that it's going to take to get there. Like what are the what are the things or the people that I need to uh, to help me make and achieve my goal? And uh, and I love that. And, you know, and I, I remember like like a lot of his lessons are interwoven through a number of messages and teachings over the course of the years. And I remember um, like I wanted to get. I wanted to, you know, obviously I got hired on a sprint very young and then I, I went to the sales department and, and I wanted to get into the supervisor department and then marketing and then vendors and whatever. But like along the way, I had managers say, you know, go talk to the people, you know, go talk to the people who are doing that position that you want to do or, you know, or who have done it. Go talk to them and find out what it is that they did in order to uh, to get in that position. Um, and uh, 99% of the people will be more than willing to talk to you and share what they did or what you might need to do to prepare yourself to get there. And those are almost always the people that get to the positions that they want to. Because once someone takes the initiative to uh, proactively come and ask, like, hey, what did you do? How did you do it? Do you have any suggestions? Do you have any resources, any other people I can talk to? Once someone does that, that, that to me differentiates them uh, significantly amongst others, right? Because they are taking the initiative, they are asking, and then I'm going to be more willing to help them get to where they need to go and where they want to go um, if I see that they're serious. Because they've taken the initiative and proactively come to me and asked. Well, I did that. And that helped me go from a salesperson to a supervisor, you know, or to an intern, to a supervisor, to a vendor manager, to a marketing guy, to a marketing manager, and so on and so forth, just by taking that advice to identify the groups or the people that can help me get there to my goals. Yes. Love it. It is. It is. And that's a that's a great way to uh, people that identify it. It's 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 an amazing thing to do, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's good. It's good. Uh, people need to realize that um, you just got to just plan. That's the, you got to have that game plan. You know, you got to have uh, identify the goals and you got to and the time frame, the, the time, the date, the time on it. you got to do it. You mm-hmm. know, you got to have those and you got to break it out. You got to have those short term. You got to have those midterms and you got to have those long terms. Right. Right. 
You know, like I said, when I was 18 years old, I had a, I had a goal when I was 43. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. I had a goal. I had I had my short term every day. I had my daily goals. I had my monthly goals, quarterly, yearly goals. Yep. Oh, and then every you know five years, ten years. But I had a goal. I was eighteen years old, and I had a goal for when I was forty three years old. Right. Right. You know, gotta have those time frames. Yeah, the time frame is critical. You're right. Um, you know, and I love like. I loved the things that he said. The time frame was important. Identifying the resources is important. I love play to win, don't play to avoid a loss. I love that. Like your whole constitution is different when you're playing to win <laughs> as opposed to playing to avoid a loss. I, you know, I think about football when teams get up in the last couple of drives. What do they do? What do they do? They they put like, in more. Yeah. Yeah, the, the 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 winners put in more, and then you have the other teams that go on coast trying to avoid losing, you know. And it's like, why do they do that? Why do they go to the prevent defense, right, as opposed to attacking? You know what I mean? Attack, yeah, playing, attack playing the hardest all the way through. Yep. Yeah, you've attacked all this way through. Now all of a sudden you're going to decide, oh well, we you know let's not attack. Let's play to avoid a loss. I yep. hate when I see teams do that. You know, I hate it. You know, yep. I. And, and you see it. It's obvious. It's obvious that they're trying to just to, OK, let's just cruise through this. Let's just, you know, kill the clock, you know, you know, pass off to the side. You know, let's just, you know, figure out a way to just run time down and slow down and let's rest. You know, let's just prevent it. No, yeah. you got to. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's just, just like you said, the football. OK, so I remember. When I was young, Nebraska football, you know, you got Tom Osborne that got criticized. And I mean, people said it in the news and you could hear the news talking about it, news articles. And, you know, you know, back then it was just the paper, but, you know, it was news and TV and they were sitting there criticizing how he ran up the score mm-hmm. at the end. You know, he, he, they, he blew him out, you know. The score is 63 and 84, and it's like, dude, you could have just slowed down and put in your third team and relaxed. And no, he played it all the way through the end. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why? He played it through the end, but he was criticized all the time. You know, he's running up the score, running up the score, running up the score. You should hear it. I mean, you should hear these people know he didn't want to lose. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I also yeah. remember Billy Tubbs with Oklahoma. And Billy Tubbs would do the same thing. And they go, well, Billy, you know, how come you got – he goes, listen, if you are not ready to play, then, you know, we're going to be playing. And we're going to show you how much you got to work on. Because we're not – hey, we're only here for one thing. And we practice how to score the ball. We practice how to play defense and how to score the ball. We don't practice how to let people score and not make shots. So, right. you know, hey, listen, we're going to show you how much you need to improve. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and he put in this, and and the thing is, is even when you're ahead or when you're winning, you you don't stop. You got to teach your, you know, there was other teammates on the team that he wanted to teach to bring up for the future. You know, hey, let's get these guys in the game, and then these guys had to show him that I could play this game. I, yeah. I'm your future football players. You know, yeah. you you got to play to win. Yeah, and you can't stop. You know, you have to go, 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 go. You can't yeah. slow down. You can't let somebody else catch up to you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And I, I do it just like you said. It's you know, it's you know, play to win is I think of sports. I was in sports all my life. You know, I did everything I possibly could to win. You know, and I and any more these days, these kids and even young, you know, I don't know what you call the millennials or, uh, but, but even the young ones, they got to learn that you guys got to play to win. You know, you gotta, you gotta hustle. You gotta, my dad always told me hustle, hustle, hustle. That's where I got the hustle from. Yeah. You know, um, you gotta hustle, you gotta hustle, you gotta play to win. You gotta keep going, 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 going. And, and you gotta keep motivated. You gotta keep, you know, you gotta be determined. You know, you gotta keep positive. 
um, at all times, at all times. You know, you can't let your personal life, you got to have a door. You got to close that door. You got to let, let your personal things, your personal problems, you got to let them stay at home, you know, yep. and you got to You got to keep motivated. You got to keep plugging away. You got to keep setting those goals and you got to put a time frame on it and you got to hit it. Yep, I agree completely. I, I love it. I, I like it. the last thing that I wanted to just point out is what's on the screen here. And it talks about what you do off the job determines how far you go on the job. And, um, you know, that is so important, you know, because, you know, the time, the preparation um, that, you know, that we put into learning our craft. And that's what I would call it, learning our craft. The time that we put in towards learning our craft is is vitally important. Um, to helping us progress in our job, right? And so like Ziegler, Brian Tracy, Tom Hopkins, all those guys, like like when my manager, when I was younger, said these are some good sales resources to learn how to sell, like I didn't like limit it to when I was at the office learning and listening to them. <laughs> you know, I didn't lift it. I didn't lift it. Right. Like if I just stopped when I when I left the office, I never would have been able to actually implement some of those techniques and strategies. Like I listened to the, the CDs or the cassettes or whatever in my car and I listened to it at home and, you know, and, and just really you know played it and played it, played it and practice and practice and practice where I could actually, you know, implement that stuff, you know. And so, you know, that's craft, like building our craft and. And, you know, and I love it how he talked about the TV scenario with the line worker who's watching 30 hours a week of TV and then the board member who's watching four to eight hours a week. And most of that is on something educational, teaching them something that to me, like, was just such a such a blow away comment. Uh, I don't even watch TV hardly at all, ever, ever. In fact, hardly ever do I watch TV now, but uh, I used to watch a lot of TV. And um, boy, you know, I always set aside time, though, to learn my craft, you know, and someone asked me like recently, like, man, how'd you learn so much about cryptocurrency? You must have been doing this for years. No, I have my daytime job and then I have my nighttime job. Right. So I'm learning about that when I leave my daytime job. So uh, it's amazing how much you can learn, you know, and how much you can grow your skill set and build your craft when you spend time off the job, you know, uh, learning as well. So I wanted to go over, I, I knew you were going that direction and I was wondering what you were going to say. <laughs> um, so my biggest thing is when I was 18 years old, I got into a business owner, you know, and I learned and I, I learned that I was in just because I owned a business and it was a detailing business. I was cleaning cars, you know, I, that's all I was doing was cleaning cars, you know. And uh, then I got in, you know, I added more to it. I did window tending and accessories and, you know, so it's not like it was, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a, a labor job, you know, but I considered it sales, you know, I'm in sales. I'm in the sales business. Every, when I was 18 years old, people are like, what do you do? I'm in sales. But guess what I wanted to do is I, I did everything I possibly could to learn. You know, I, that ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to learn something new. You know, when I was little, I was learning, 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 always learning. You know, I, and it was hard for me to execute. Gymnastics was a very hard sport. I was a chubby little kid. You know, I was a chubby, chubby, if you want to call it fat, you know, I was a chubby little kid. And, and it was hard for me. You know, but I always wanted to learn. I was determined. I was going to get better. I was going to get better. So then I learned as I got older. It took me till I was about 14 years old to learn that I needed to get stronger. I needed to lose weight. I needed to get healthy, you know, and uh, and and when I turned 14, my life changed because it, it, it was a big step for me to lose a lot of weight, to get real strong and to get better at what I was doing. And I did it. But when I got in the sales, it was so funny because I, I really started selling cars. Well, I started learning sales and that's all it was, was sales, sales, sales. You know, I was listening to Zig Ziglar. I was learning everything I possibly could. Everything. I was watching videos every single day. I was watching videos or watching, you know, listening to podcast, listening to, to, uh, 
you know, CDs. I was, I would go and buy those CDs because that's what it was. It was buy the CDs that I would yeah. listen to a yeah. video or a DVD, you know? And so I would sit there and listen, listen, learn, learn, learn. And I was learning sales. Mm-hmm. And so then I would go to, I, I would pay to these third party, you know, events and, and go and learn about sales. So I was always doing it. So then I learned that it's the off the job, right? Yeah. So every day, every day I was trying to learn sales and I was doing the sales pitches or I was doing the closings or I was doing something in my everyday life <laughs> at home <laughs> to my wife. Yeah, yes, yes. And she would be like, there's days where she was like, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you. She goes, I'm not your sales pitch. You know, she would, she would say that stuff to me because I was doing it. I would yeah. always, I, I didn't, I didn't say it. I don't, I, you know, I, I was always, uh, I always got scared when it came to role playing and and in the car business they do that they they want you to do a walk around or they teach you how to sell the car you know right. they, it's product knowledge and i learned and so i knew in order for me to get over my fear i had to learn the product knowledge so i had to learn about all the vehicles i was in the used car business not the new car i right. learned about all of the cars so i was always learning about cars or learning about sales but then so i had to learn so everything i did at home <laughs> I was sounding like I was trying to sell or something (laughs) or a house or going somewhere. It was always a sales pitch. Yes. At home. I did it at home. I did it to my wife and I wasn't sitting there saying, I want to role play. It was my everyday thing was me getting better at sales. Yeah. So I was doing the role pitch, you know, the role playing with my wife and she's just got tired of it. (laughs) <laughs> no. Hey, Carlos is funny because people would always say, Steve, don't talk that sprint talk with me. And it was because <laughs> they would, like, don't talk that sprint talk with me. And I was like, I'm not talking sprint talk. This is just normal stuff. But that's because that's what I was learning. Right. I was learning whether it would be, you know, sales, whether it would be corporate, uh, you know, the corporate speak, if you will. Uh, and, and I practiced it so much that, yeah, I would have people st- do the same thing. Like, well, don't talk that sprint stuff to me. You know, right. uh, <laughs> my wife, it, it, she would just, it would just, it would bug her to death because she would think I would always be selling her something. Yeah, that's funny. You know, but, and, you know, and she but, pointed it out all the time. But the difference, though, Carlos, is that there are many people who never have that conversation, and then there's a few of us who we've had to have that conversation. That's the difference, right? That's the difference. And that's the importance of, of, of working off the job, trying to build your skill set to where sometimes it may blend into reality of regular life. And it's like, stop talking like that to me. You know? yeah, it was it was like that. And that's what I did every single day. And she got tired of it, too, because, you know, it, it was a big thing. You know, I was always handing out cards, you know, in the car business. People come to you, you know, at the car lot. But to me, it was I was always trying to get business. Yeah. You know, and every to where we went, she it would just drive her nuts. It would drive her crazy because every day, everywhere we went, I was talking, you know, either cars, business, talking about cars. Hey, you need a new vehicle. Hey, you having problems with this car? Um, And she would just it would just drive her to um, it. It would drive her to. it would drive her crazy because I was always talking sales or always talking to somebody or, you know, trying to sell something, uh, you know, and it was, I was like that every day, everywhere I went, every place we stopped, I was trying to sell something, you know what I mean? And I was just trying to learn and I was trying to get better at it. And I was trying to, you know, hit my goals and I was trying to, you know, I I had, I, I was determined, you know, uh, I would get up at, you know, I would be at the at the car lot at 6 a.m. You know, I get up and, and I'd be there setting my goals. It's not like, you know, I was making sure that my place was clean. You know, I would get up and I would, you know, I'd be there just before six. Um, I would I would vacuum the place. I'd take out the trash. I would make sure my desk is clean. I would make sure that everything was in place. And then I would sit down. And I would go over all my goals. 
but I had plenty of time to do it. You know what I mean? By 6 a.m., I was I was setting goals. You know, I was trying to figure out where I'm at for the month, where I needed to be, you know, where how much money I made, how many cars I sold, if I'm number one, if I if somebody else is selling more. You know, I, I'm trying to figure out how to win. And yeah. I was trying to figure out to be the best, right. you know, uh, and, and and it drove people nuts, but I just did it. I didn't let anybody say anything different to me. Yeah. yeah. I okay. didn't care. You know, I, I, it wasn't like it was a big deal, but it drove my, my wife nuts. She said something to me, but I still did it. And it, I wasn't going to allow her to, it's not like she was being negative about it. It's just she was telling me to stop with her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I had to keep learning. I had to keep doing it. I had to uh, go after it, you know, and I don't let anybody tell me any different. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just because somebody says don't do it doesn't mean I stop. Right. You know, I just right. change it, you know. Um but you can't let somebody tear you down because the way you're doing something or you're at, you know, after work, you know, determination, you know, you can't neglect the family. You know, you got to still do your family stuff. You just got to do it with it. Right. You know, I mean, just because I was with I was with my family, I was enjoying my time. But yeah. but I was doing work with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And 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 you got to You can't. You got to learn your priorities. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and and you got to set your goals. I'm a big goal setter. I was a big, big, big goal setter. Yeah. Um, big, big, big at yeah. it. This is where I learned it with Zig Ziglar. Yep. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this baby up. We're right at uh, straight up ten o'clock. And uh, been a great topic talking Zig Ziglar, talking goals. And uh, have a great weekend, my friend, and, and uh, enjoy it. I'll see you next week. All right. Well, have fun. All right. You too, my man. Talk to you soon. See you. Bye.